and welcome to another video from History Land. New stills from the upcoming Netflix historical drama Outlaw King have appeared on the internet. <laughs> Starring Chris Pine, that guy you liked in Star Trek, but didn't realize was in a Lindsay Lohan movie, and beards, lots of beards. This is the story of Robert the Bruce that wasn't in Braveheart. First of all, I want to make it very clear that I am not criticizing anything I'm not seeing with my own two eyes. I'm, this entire video is about these photographs and what I've seen in them. To start on a positive note, they're better than Braveheart. Well done guys. But there were some things that I thought could have been handled a bit better. Bearing in mind again, I'm not criticizing any actors, writers, casting directors, directors, or anything like that. I'm just saying that some more care might have been taken in the uh, costumes and research. Three things jumped out at me and they are as follows. Number one, armor. Looking specifically at the pictures of the knights and kings and lords and stuff, um, we should be seeing more plate armor. Uh, all the guys are dressed up in chainmail, lots of chainmail, that's all good, but nobody's wearing any helmets. There should be great helms and a small variety of visored helmets. It should fit, it should fit well, and it shouldn't look like anything resembling hammered brass. And that's specifically referring to the costume worn by the Prince of Wales. The horse armour I've seen is a little late for the Scottish Wars of Independence in that it looks kind of gothic and that should be reserved for the 15th century. Number two, heraldry. They should have it. Heraldry is a nobleman's passport. It identifies who he is in a second. In either a dangerous situation, he would be wearing full tabard, shield, have a banner somewhere with his uh, coat of arms on it, or he'd probably be wearing it uh, in a small way as part of his general clothes. There's something wrong. Edward II is wearing a Welsh dragon. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the Prince of Wales, or the heir to the throne, wore only a very slightly different version of the royal coat of arms, which was just to say, I am a member of the royal family, but I'm not the king. And that again speaks to how important heraldry was to the nobility and royalty of the time. There also aren't any heraldic devices seen on any of what I take to be Scottish horsemen and knights. This, I think, is a little bit uh, more acceptable because uh, they're on the run and they don't want to be identified instantly as who they are. But for the English side and the English supporters, there's no reason why they shouldn't have bags and bags of heraldry.
three is weapons. And this is a fairly simple one. Most of the weapons look fine. But there's something missing. None of the cavalrymen are holding lances. They don't seem to have any squires holding lances. Now, for a knight, you don't go into battle with one weapon. You go into battle with about uh, three or four, if you can manage it. And the first weapon you're going to use is your lance. That hits the, main, the three main points that I noticed. If you would like to go and find out some maybe some interesting insights for yourself, here's some tips of what to go and look for. Go and search the great seals of the nobility. And I don't mean the large marine mammals that can balance a ball on their nose. I mean the wax postage stamps that identified who sent what. The, the impressions in the wax and of the seals themselves show knights in armor riding horses and this gives a contemporary view of what a horse and a rider should wear to war. So to start you off go check out the uh, great seals of Edward I and Edward II, John Balliol, Robert the Bruce and John de Warren the sixth out of Surrey. They're all really good. Also something that researchers and historical illustrators and reenactors and people like that uh, look at when they're recreating armor and clothing uh, and, and coats of arms is uh, the tomb effigies in different old ch churches around the country and you can see photographs of some of these online too. Check out uh, those of Humphrey de Bowen, the fourth Earl of Hereford, uh, Sir James Douglas, William and Ima de Valence whose uh, Effigies are in Westminster Abbey, and there's also a really good sketch of uh, Ima's uh, tomb on the British Museum website. So check that out too. I'll put all I'll put links to as many of these uh, as I can in the description box. And if you want to research in some books, then I have some suggestions for you as well. Uh, for anything regarding arms and armor, the first stop is usually Osprey books, and they actually they have a really good series of um, warrior titles written by Christopher Gravitt, and they are English medieval knight. So have a look at them, specifically the ones between uh, the 1200s to the 1400s. Then have a look on the Osprey book written by Pete Armstrong and illustrated by Graham Turner. All the Osprey titles I just mentioned are illustrated by Graham Turner and he's the, the main artist you want to look at for superb reconstructions of medieval arms and armor and also uh, modes of music. Also, we have the ultimate book on Edward I currently available, written by Mark Morris. Uh, that is a Great and Terrible King, and you should check that out, it's really detailed, and it includes William Wallace, Robert the Bruce, and Black. Then there's a really good introductory biography of Robert the Bruce. That's written by Ronald McNair Scott, and uh, it's very well written, it's very simple to follow, it's very engaging, and I recommend it. If you're looking for a good medieval history read that sheds some more light on what you might be going to see on Netflix, check that out. I'm also going to add uh, digitalized uh, copies of uh, contemporary accounts that concern the Battle of Bannockburn, uh, which I tweeted during the, um, during the, the big anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn in 2014. Right guys, that's all from me for now, uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you again for another video in History Land soon, I hope.